up everybody, it's the Maverick Man. Um, just want to catch up with you from the last Pro Griff, uh, from where we left off before I talk about what I'm doing today. Um, so last time I left off, I was going to New York, and my first time going into the city to make a delivery, and um, you know, like I thought, it was going to be a little bit chaotic. There was ton of traffic getting into the city and then um, I parked on one side street I was like right in the heart of everything I walked to the front of the building uh, the address and then I asked the guys out front I'm up there like valet you know, just to confirm and he said yeah that's the address that's the building right there so I go in and uh, I'm looking and I see a sign that says Empire State or something. I'm like, whoa, is this the Empire State building? <laughs> because when you're right outside of it, you can't really tell unless you're like almost in the street. When you look up, you can see the building, but like the base kind of spreads out a little bit, as you would imagine. And uh, so yeah, so I was I was in the lobby. Uh, spoke to the gentleman by the uh, the stairs. Told me that they, they take um, loads through the loading dock area on the side of the building. I think it was like one, it was one thirty-third Street or something like that. Um, so I looped around the building and I parked uh, right in the loading dock area. So they had cones there, blocking off being able to back into it so I parked right in front of the cones and I walked I put my flashers on walked in spoke to the security guards and um, I just wanted to make sure I was parked in an okay area and he said yep that's that's a broker spot uh, he, he said I just needed to contact the person that I was delivering to to come down because the the load I was dropping off wasn't that big. It was only four or five gallon buckets of um, some construction material. I forget exactly what the uh, item was, but I was just waiting for them to come down and I was walking back over to my truck with the, with the security guys. Cause there, there were a few of them just kind of hanging out like outside their office there. And mind you, their office is probably like not even 50 feet from where I was parked. Like I was right next to my truck the whole time. And I'm walking up and I see this meter maid officer lady and uh, she's, she's approaching my van and she, I see her looking at it. And I'm like, hey, hey, what's going on? And uh, she looks at me and then she's like, oh, nope, it's too late. I'm writing you a, a parking ticket. And I'm like, lady, where do you, where do you want me to park? You know, this is the loading dock. <laughs> like, um, it seems pretty, pretty absurd that you're gonna give me a ticket when I'm parking at the loading dock, where security has told me to park. I'm not blocking the street. I'm not doing anything wrong. And um, so we go back and forth for a bit. She's really not giving me a reason. She's kind of like, mm, like giving me attitude, like ignoring what I'm asking her and being like, do you see these cars and these, I'm like, yes, these trucks are parked in the loading dock. And this one is delivering food. And the, like, there are a whole bunch of trucks parked there. At the time, I didn't see any other tickets. And then after she did, she hit my truck, she hit this other truck, which I'm sure he probably had the same feelings I did. But he didn't get back until well after she left. So I went and spoke to the security guards. Um, well actually, one of them was right there. He saw the whole thing, and he was like in her face the whole time. You know, props to that guy. You know, props to their their whole security team. They were all really chill. And um, so that guy was getting on her case, like, like what are you doing? You know, it's like we're we're just trying to conduct business in your city. Like I get you want to write these tickets to make money for the city and all this stuff, but I'm sure they make millions off of that because it's she, she must have just been waiting there because it was literally right after I parked. Uh, but it's just frustrating 
when you're in business, especially the transportation business like this, um, if you're a truck driver, expediter, whatever, uh, you know there's a ton of expenses that come with even just one vehicle. Um, you know, one cargo van, sprinter van, one box truck, if it's a small box or big box or tractor trailer. These machines, these trucks, they cost a lot of money and, and it's not just the the cost of the truck itself, it's the the insurance is a big kicker. Uh, it's not too bad, although my insurance compared to what I've seen elsewhere, uh, relatively speaking is not as bad, but it's still a very high number. Um, you know, and I see other people just for a van could be $15,000 a year. Some of them even way higher than that. Uh, and I don't know if that just has a lot to do with the previous driving record or the state or a mix of everything, but it just really sucks when you're just trying to work hard and you're trying to make a timely delivery, just trying to get your job done, and then you have things like that that just kind of sneak up on you. And I, I don't want to like sound like I'm bashing this lady or hating on her too much. You know, she's just trying to do her job and I get that. And I'm sure that job must really suck because you're dealing with people that are pissing you all day long. But um, just, you know, it would be, it'd be great if, you, I, I would imagine she has some type of quota she must tip, but like, it'd be great if they were just a lot more fair with people. Like if she just, instead of running to my truck as soon as I walked away to go talk to security to make sure everything was okay with me parking there. She just, you know, gave me literally three more seconds and said, oh, you know, I'd prefer if you didn't park here. Um, you know, I would like to write you a ticket or whatever, like explain her spiel and then maybe uh, I could have done something differently or just try to speed up to get out of her way. But, um, you know, that's just one of like the, the frustrations when you are in this business, um, especially going into New York City or any major city, which I, I understand you know, some of my other truck driver friends, um, why they would never go into New York with a big truck. I also take that stance because it sucked going in with a van, never mind with a tractor trailer. Um, but, but yeah, so that was my experience yesterday. No, no, was it yesterday? Or maybe a couple days ago. Um, my my last check in with you guys. Um, so that didn't go great. Um, it's kind of delayed there. The one good thing out of it was I made the delivery to the guy. The guy was really nice. He, him and his partner took their their buckets. Um, Security was awesome. Um, they were really cool. They, they just said, you know, like I already had the ticket, so they're like, just stay there the, the rest of the day or however long you need to stay there. You know, it doesn't matter. You're not going to get a ticket again. So um, they also told me to file a dispute like right away and take pictures and videos and everything, which I did. And I, they have an app in New York for parking tickets where you just file a, a dispute. So I did that through the app. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear back as of the filming of this video. Uh, yeah, it was yesterday. So, so just waiting to hear back from them. And um, yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. I uh, ended up spending some time there just Waiting, waiting to get something out of there, but yeah, that was just a pain in the butt. I didn't go over the road. <clears throat> I ended up working back back home. Oh, I need a little coffee. A little Dunkin' Donuts. So yeah, I ended up making my way back home at a terrible time. I hit all the traffic. Um, but yeah, so fast forward to today. You know, did some stuff at home today. Um, I was trying to find a load out pretty much all day long and I started losing hope, thinking that tonight was just gonna be a home night. Um, 
I bought some pizzas for me and my fiance. Uh, I didn't get to see her, she was still working, but I left her a box there. So I was I was at home, I had just had a box of pizza, because I'm a fatty, and uh, I was just bidding on stuff, you know, just thinking like, I'm not gonna get it. And uh, there's a load coming out of Rhode Island, out of a town near Providence, that was going to West Virginia. And the, the only thing I was a bit nervous about, there was no weight posted, which that, that makes me nervous because there's times you'll see loads on load boards or uh, whatever platforms you're using that the weights can be outrageous for these types of vehicles. Like the, the max payload for this truck is around 4,300 pounds, but I try to keep that as low as possible just for wear and tear. Uh, it's a brand new Transit uh, 350, and I'm trying to keep it as, you know, lightly used as possible. Driving's fine, like all the mileage is fine, it's just try not to get a lot of wear and tear on it with, with heavy weight loads, you know, unless I'm getting compensated very well for it. So I uh, placed a bid, did uh, like just over a dollar a mile, and it was with a new carrier that I'm working with, and I had just signed up, like I just added three or three more carriers to my, my list of carriers that I work with. Uh, there's one so far that's been working extremely well that I've done pretty much all my loads through. And then this one, um, I was kind of not sure how they worked. I, I had, they, they have part of it through uh, app to communicate and whatnot, but I hadn't seen anything happening on there. I just, myself was active. And they had been calling me. I, I think I actually ignored some of their calls by accident because if you, I don't know if you, um, if you've activated like a motor carrier authority or got your DOT numbers, any of that stuff, you know as soon as you submit that, you'll get about 40 spam calls a day. And it uh, pretty much doesn't really end for a long time. I mean, it, it reduces. Like, I'm not getting... Um, I'm not getting 40 anymore. I'm probably getting like 10 a day now. I'm getting a lot of... Uh, random Indian people calling me about all sorts of stuff, like financing and um, dispatching and all this stuff, but I've, I'm have i just trying, I'm, I'm trying to be more conscious of, uh, of picking up the phone, even if it says spam, because I'm glad I did with this one. The first time they called, uh, it, the beginning of, of the number, was this the same as the spam caller I've been getting, but it, it didn't show the like the city, which I found weird. It just said like potential spam or something like that. Uh, but I still ignored it, and then they called me back immediately, and I was like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm glad I did. It was this lady calling me uh, from the new service that had um, this load that I'm on right now out of Rhode Island. And it was quick. They, they gave me all the details of the load, the weight, um, which they estimated to be around a thousand pounds, which I was fine with that. Uh, come to find out, it was actually three pieces of, or three items, and it's like 55 pounds, which is like a home run. Um, so we do that. We, uh, I, Give her my bid. I bid just over a dollar a mile. It's about 750 bucks. And they go, or she she hangs up, or we, we hang up, whatever. She called me back like two minutes later saying, congratulations, you got the load. So um, she said, wait to hear out from such and such uh, with confirmation and everything, and like the Raycon and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. So I waited about 20 minutes, hadn't heard anything. You know, I was ready to rock, had all my stuff together, and you know, I keep my, my truck ready to go with items for over the road, just in case. And um, didn't hear anything, so I was like, what's going on? So I called up my contact, the, the lady who had 
set me up with enrolling with their platform and um, she, she was awesome and like throughout the whole process I like to, to get enrolled with them I was kind of a pain because I was changing trucks I was waiting on my Ram Pro Master which that's a whole other story for a different day I'll probably do a, a separate video or a few videos on that but basically I, I had a Ram Pro Master and it had an issue I had to sell it back um, because of a certain part that they couldn't source so during that time I was kind of being tough to get signed up with this lady because my truck was changing so I kept delaying and but you know long story short I, I got signed up with this company as a carrier and, and or they're a carrier um, and here we are um, doing our, our first load so I, I talked to her tell her what's going on I had her back so she called she said I'm gonna contact the team and uh, see, see what's going on there so we get off the phone and 20 more minutes goes by and I'm like maybe I'm not going maybe they made a mistake you know just trying to get a feel for how this company works um, so I call her back so now it's been about 40 minutes since the first interaction I had where I got the, the, the winning bid and um, she said no nope, everything's great um, they should be reaching out to you either through the app or through um, email with the Raycon and then they'll have the address and all the information so I right, right when she said that pretty much it was like 10 seconds later I had the email I signed the Raycon got the address boom took off and then that's when I found out it was only for real 55 pounds because even sometimes on those sheets you know like not until you get the actual shipping papers and see the items with your own eyes pick them up <laughs> um, that's the only time you know for sure what like what the weight is for what you're carrying because uh, I've there's, there's been a few times where I've expected to have something be way heavier and I get there and it's like 20 pounds which is great um, so so I got to the place in Rhode Island um, you know I had to go to two different doors and then I this guy came to the, the second door after ring the buzzer he had me go around to the other the other side of the loading dock went over there um, seemed like a really nice guy you know wish me luck and a safe trip loaded up um, so I did take a quick photo of the load and probably make a video about this trip as well separately um, but then yeah I uh, definitely needed a coffee because at this time so I got up around 8 o'clock um, I was at the pickup ready to leave the pickup spot I think around like 515 now it's almost 8 o'clock in the evening um, I'm in Connecticut somewhere probably not too far from New York at this point but I, I did just stop and get my, my Dunkin' Donuts coffee to power me through the night. The whole trip is a little bit under 12 hours. Um, it looks like I'm going to northern West Virginia, almost near Ohio. Uh, I, like cutting through the Appalachian Mountains or so, or in that area, as, as far as I can tell. So I, I am excited that this is my first non-regional like finally going outside of New England trip with my Sprinter van and um, oh, we're speed check. and I'm uh, you know, looking forward to see how this experience goes to see how I like doing the over the road versus the regional versus the local um, you know and just try to get a comparison going to see what I want to really focus on over time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to cover. Uh, I got about 10 hours left, 635 miles. Um, I was just listening to the JRE show. Uh, 
uh, Shane Gillis and uh, Matt McCluster are on there. And as usual, they're hilarious. Uh, I, I was planning on going to see Shane Gillis when he was in town in February. I think it's the weekend. I'm trying to think which weekend he's in town for. Maybe, like, I feel like it's like the 19th or something. But, uh, you know, I love Shane and the dogs and all that. I'm a big fan, but the ticket prices were, uh, Jesus Christ, they were pretty freaking expensive. Um, I think for like shitty seats, it was like 235 bucks. And then for good seats, you're talking like 500 bucks. And then if you add in the StubHub or whatever, Platt Ticketmaster, whatever platform fees, that's always like, it was like another almost $200 per ticket just to be able to go see Shane. And I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> I don't know. That's a lot for a comedy show. Cause I like kind of ran into the same issue when Dave Chappelle was in town. Cause his were, I think around the same price. And it's tough. Cause I, I've always wanted to see Dave Chappelle too. And I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know, man. It's just a lot to justify for a comedy show. And it'd be two of us, be me and my fiance. So that's, talking like a thousand bucks to go see a comedy show yeah. you know i watch them all the time it'd be cool to see them in person so i don't know at, at uh, some point in life i'll overcome that cheap barrier <laughs> and uh pull the trigger on some tickets but we did pull the trigger on going to see tim dylan because tim dylan's awesome as well you know i love his show the tim dylan show be like a great Grand Theft Auto 6 newscaster or like radio show host. And I really hope Rockstar takes that seriously and puts him in the game. Uh, but he's also in town, so we're, we're going to check him out I think next week. And uh, yeah, no, really excited to go, go see Tim in person live. I think that's about it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to cover on this trip. Uh, this will be my first night in the van, like doing an overnight in the van. Because um, even when I've done regional, if I'm close enough, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm always close enough to just drive home. So worst comes to worst, I, I just try to incorporate it in my pricing when I do a bid to be able to deadhead back and not have it be like a oh shit like I just wasted so much money and time. Uh, why is it telling me to go here? I don't know why it's telling me to go off the highway here, but uh, no commercial vehicles. Go straight. I don't want to go down there. Let's see what happens. For about 54 miles. Yeah, they did nothing to the time. Yeah, I don't know why I uh, wanted me to take that parkway there. But anyways, um, so yeah, so really excited to see Tim Dillon. First night sleeping in the van when I get to West Virginia, and uh, I'm I'm really curious to see what I get coming out of there because I'm I'm trying to make like I'm fine if I do one more day on the road and then head back home after that, but uh, I'm also fine if I do a trip right back to the east, like right back to New England from West Virginia tomorrow. So we'll see what I have out of there. I mean I'm not I'm like. I think right near the border of Ohio. So I'm not far from the Ohio loads, Pennsylvania, and then, is it Kentucky or Kansas? One of the K's over there in the middle, in the, in the Midwest. I've like always, like I've always had a hard time mentally placing where Kansas and Kentucky are on a map. Um, but one of those states, so I'm, I'm kind of right next to all those states. And I know there's a lot of action in Ohio as far as what was going to there. I'm not sure what's coming out of there, but I would imagine it's equal or close to it. So 
I'm hoping I, if worse comes to worse, I'll do one more day out and then um, head back home. It would be great to go down to Georgia and maybe I'll go say hi to my aunt and uncle down there. Um, so I'm hoping for that. Florida wouldn't be bad either, but I feel like depending how far down, that could be bad. You know, it'd be nice to see some family and friends down there, but uh, I might get stuck down there. And I really want to be back um, this this week. We have some plans this the end of the week into the weekend. So, uh, oh, also too, I I totally spaced it out before talking about the Empire State Building situation. Um, I had mentioned I was supposed to meet up with my, my friend Ian, and um, that would have been great. You know, I, I was kind of like a bit flustered, and I just wanted to get out of there. <laughs> and he lived, he lives like on the other side of the city, kind of, so it would have taken a little while. Even though it's not far mile-wise, I probably could have walked there faster. It's just all the traffic would have taken forever, and then it might have put me in a bad area to get out of the city to go to a, a run so unfortunately we had to, to postpone grabbing lunch but I'm sure I'll be back in that area soon there's always stuff going to New York and New Jersey and um, Western Connecticut all, all those areas so so hopefully I'll be back there soon and uh, get to grab some lunch with my friend and catch up a little bit It'd be nice maybe to do like an overnight at some point and just catch a load in the morning so I can taken the city a little bit I, I haven't actually like walked around the city um juice so i think i went with my parents to go see the mary poppins show there it was the last time i like actually walked around the city i think it might have been in high school which was a little while ago so um so yeah I, at least 10 years ago um and then before that I was probably 10 years old, and then before that was a month before the uh, Twin Towers got hit by airplanes. Um, right, it was it was a month before 9/11 took place, or even maybe a few weeks before. And I, I always had this crazy obsession with the Twin Towers, and um, my, my parents thought it was weird. I was just you know, I just thought they were the coolest thing ever. And they were these super tall buildings. I was obsessed with them as a kid. And mind you, I was really, I was, what, third grade at the time, I think? And um, we were going all over New York. We were doing all the hot spots. We were doing Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty. Walked all over the place, checking everything out. We went to F.A.O. Schwartz, the toy store. It was really cool, getting to see all those, those places. But we, when we were in Ellis Island, all I was doing was borrowing my parents' little uh, camera, like the old school cameras, not like now where you have the the iPhone and you can take a million photos. It was, it was the old, like I don't even know if my parents had a digital camera at the time. I think it was before that. And uh, yeah, I was just taking pictures of the Twin Towers from Ellis Island and then taking photos from the Statue of Liberty uh, standing that area of the Twin Towers and I was I saw the pamphlets everywhere we went I was just grabbing pamphlets about the Twin Towers and then on the train ride back to Connecticut because we took the train into the city uh, we we got to meet this lady who worked in the, the, the towers themselves which to me she was like my hero I was like oh my god you, you get to go into these towers every single day and like you get to go way up in the sky and you know I was, I was a little kid really excited to meet her and then you know cut scene to what happened not even a month later it was, it was terrible and uh I don't know, I've always wondered what what happened to that lady if she survived that incident or if, if she didn't make it but uh you know, I wish I remembered her name so I could verify that but uh, maybe I, I wrote it down somewhere if I have anything from that trip you know, I'm sure I saved the pamphlets they're probably stored away somewhere but, um, but yeah, you know, just a fun little story about my childhood in New York. So yeah, now I got uh, nine hours and change to go. It's gonna be uh, hopefully a smooth night. I'll get there probably whenever, like I don't know if this is a 24 hour facility. If not, I'm probably gonna be the first one to arrive there. 
and I'm going to drop this, this uh, load off, these three pieces of freight, and then try to sleep for a couple hours, maybe, I mean, maybe even till noontime. I'm going to see if these people are nice enough to, to let me park at their facility and then just take a nap in the van for like four hours or something. And um, yeah, maybe around 10, 30, 11, try to catch something coming back towards the east or maybe down south. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's the, the Maverick Man. This is my third riff on the road, third road riff. And uh, I'll be back again maybe after I, I do this drop.